Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course, and in this module we're going to be looking at the play axis. Now the play axis is really an interesting visual that you can use to enhance the rest of your report inside of Power BI. It's really a type of a dynamic slicer that lets you animate all of the other visuals on your report. So kind of think of it as a slicer, but one that you can actually animate with a play button. All the kind of capabilities that you have with a slicer, but by hitting the play button, it'll kind of toggle back and forth through the different values that you have within a particular attribute. And you can set whatever value you want to be in that slicer, that animated slicer, and you can even control the playback speed. So one of the things that's oftentimes requested in the play axes as far as things like the scatter chart is the ability to control the, the playback speed, which you don't really have a ton of control over with the native controls. But when you're using the play axes, this actually has the ability to change the speed at which the values are iterated over. And so we'll take a look at how this one works. It's a really interesting visual. It's developed by the Analytics and Data Science Department out of a, a hospital out of Portugal. And it's something that I think you guys will really enjoy. This is one of my favorites as well. Let's take a look at how you can actually go download it, where you need to install it, and then how to get started using it. All right, so our first step is to go to the Office Store. So if you go to store.office.com, you'll find the listing of all the Power BI visuals available right here. So I'll select Power BI. And then to make this a little bit faster, I'll go ahead and search up here in the top section here for the Play Axes or the play axis. And I should see that visual appear right here for me, also called Dynamic Slicer. And if I select that, it'll allow me to now go download it by hitting Add. And if I hit Add, it'll also show me where I can download a sample report here as well. So you can see a sample report of how others may use it, or you can just download the visual right here. Once you have that downloaded, you'll work your way back over to the Power BI desktop. So I'm gonna do that as well. And in the Power BI desktop, we're going to start by pulling in some data. Now, we're going to be looking at some sales data, very typical sales data, and we'll also look at sales data by employee in this example. So I'm going to go up to the Get Data section here, and I'm going to pull in from an Excel file our sales data by employee. So I'll select Excel, go over to the Data section here, and select Sales by Employee to be able to work through this example. It's going to import this data. We're going to go ahead and tell it that we want to bring in the sales spreadsheet in that workbook, and then click Load to bring this into the Power BI desktop. Now we're going to create several, several visuals here in this example, and that way we can actually have kind of a full report that we can then build, build on top of with the play axis. So the first thing that we're going to do is start by bringing in a shape map. Now a shape map is actually a preview feature, at least as of the moment of me recording this. So you may need to go turn this on if you want to follow this example exactly how I've done it. To turn that on, you'll go underneath the file menu, and then you'll go underneath the settings section here, options and settings, and then choose options. And then you'll see there's a section here specifically for preview features where you can turn on things like the shape map visual that I'm going to show in this example. All right, so once you've turned that on, it may prompt you to restart Power BI Desktop. That's fine. Just go ahead and go through that. And then you should be able to now see the shape map like I see in my example. So I'm going to start by creating a shape map. And we're going to put this shape map to show states. Okay, so we'll show states. And we want to see the total sales by each state here in this example. Okay, so we've got one nice little visual here with a map of my sales by state, okay? Let's also now bring in something like a column chart. So I'm gonna go bring in a column chart here, and we're gonna see something like the sales by employee. So I'll bring in employee and the total sales again, and then we'll make this into a nice visual right here. Then lastly, let's also bring in one other visual. Let's do something like a line chart that shows the total sales by month. So I'll go ahead and select the, make sure I select outside of any of the visuals we already created, click on the line chart, give this some real estate here, and then we'll say that we want to see this uh, as the total sales by month. All right, so we've got a couple visuals here that we've designed, but what I'd like to do is I actually want to animate this so that I can see the changes in values across time. So to do that, perhaps maybe I want to do is actually see how this has changed year by year. And so if I want to do that, I can import something like the play axis over here in the visualization section, and I can say import from file and import a custom visual and then go find the custom visual that we downloaded a few moments ago. In my case, I've stored this all in one central location here underneath custom visuals and this one here called play axis. And I'll select the play axis and then hit open. That now brings it into the Power BI desktop and I can see it's available to me right here, the little play button. Now I can select that, uh, make sure I have nothing selected in the design surface right now, and I can select the play axis, make that a little bit larger, and I can put something like the calendar year in there. And so what it'll allow me to do now is it actually gives me an animated uh, play button, kind of looks like a Walkman here, where you can hit the play button and actually animate the changes in the values across time. Now the values here are changing for the map, even though it's kind of difficult to see, there's not a ton of change year over year, but you'll actually see some 
slight uh, shading change in some of the states in here. But for the most part, they have about the same number of sales each year. So that's why you don't see a ton of changes there. But as I animate this again, you'll notice here in my employee list, you can see how much they sold for each year. You can actually see the year that we're looking at right here. So it's actually showing you the year that we're looking at. And you can also see the line chart itself also changes. So the line chart changes here to show the values of the sales by month for the particular year that we're looking at. So it's a really nice way to actually make something that to animate or make it dynamic, even when you're working with a feature or a report that doesn't necessarily have a ton of dynamic features. Now this one, we're actually using the year and we're using the year attribute to kind of toggle back and forth between the different year values. But I could have just as easily changed this to something like uh, employee instead if I wanted to. So I could drop the employee in here and animate by the employee and you'll actually see that it kind of toggles back and forth between each of the employees, which is kind of an interesting way to visualize it. And you can see the name of the employee that we're looking at here. I can make that a little larger. So it's a nice way to hear that you can really aren't limited by a, a time element. It doesn't have to be time at all. It can actually be any attribute that you want. Now in this case, I'm gonna flip it back over to year. Just wanna show you the fact that you can make those changes in here. The other thing that's interesting about the play axis is you can also have a few things that you can format underneath the format paintbrush section. So underneath the format paintbrush section, we'll start by looking at the animation settings right here. Underneath the animation settings, this is where you can actually turn on the ability to auto start the animation. So if I click on on here, that'll actually automatically start this without me having to click the play button. And you'll see the play button kind of gets grayed out while that's going on, but it only does it one time. So if you wanted to do something like loop and continuously loop over the values, you can hit on on the loop section here and it'll continuously loop over the different values that you have. Okay, so that's kind of an interesting way to, to, to continue to have this loop over and over and over if you wanted to for some reason. You can also change the time, the, the amount of time in milliseconds that's spent on each of the attributes here. Right now it's spending a thousand milliseconds on each year, but I could change this to either be much larger if I wanted it to take longer on each one, or I can make it actually go down, maybe it's something like 500, and then I can actually make it take and spend much less time on each of the attribute values that we have. So it's kind of an interesting way to be able to kind of toggle back and forth and change the animation settings if you so chose to. Underneath the color section, if I go down to the color section here, you'll see you can actually change the color on the animation bar itself. So if I click that on, you'll notice that it actually changes the colors here, and you can change that even uh, more if you wanted to, where you can actually change the colors that are being used on the animation bar if you wanted to. That's one way you can change the colors. If you change the colors and click on show all, you can change them to individual colors. Or if you change the default color here, that actually makes it so all of the values are the same color here, um, except for the ones that are being animated at the time. Okay, so that's one capability that you have in here. I kind of like the view where it shows a different color for each one. All right, next below that, you'll see the enable caption section. This actually allows you to turn off the year that it's showing here. If you don't want to display the year, you can turn that off and it makes the animation buttons much larger. And if that's the case, if you want to do something like that where you turn it off, what a lot of people will do is it'll actually bring in something like a slicer, I shouldn't say a slicer, but a card in here that just shows the value itself. So if I stop this for a moment, bring in a card visual. Let me select, make sure I don't have anything selected. And then place the year in that and make sure that it's not going to aggregate the year. And let's just say do not summarize or I want to show a distinct value here. You can actually do not summarize it by going up to the modeling section here and telling it to not summarize the year. Doesn't really make sense to summarize. And then we can kind of change this. So I don't really want to summarize this. Let's remove that field for a moment. Bring in the card once more, add calendar year to it. And then it looks like it's still trying to, and now it's trying to count it. Really, we just want to show the distinct value here. So the nice thing about how this works is you can, if you had text, for example, and you wanted to kind of animate through each of those text values, you can bring in a card visual here and you can be able to display that very easily there. I want to go ahead and stop this for a moment. Let's look at the last couple things we have here. So you have the enable caption we've turned off. You also have the ability to change the color of the caption if you wanted to, change the size of the caption. So I'm making it a little larger here. And you can also change the alignment. So if you wanted to right align, left align, center align within the box that you have here, you have the ability to change those few things in here. All right, so that's really it for the play axis. It's a nice visual that gives you the ability to really animate the way that your chart works, the rest of your report works. And it gives you some capabilities that you really don't have any other way unless you use something like a scatter chart inside of the Power BI desktop, which does have an animation feature, but this allows you to animate everything inside of the Power BI desktop, which is a really nice capability. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Look forward to showing you our next custom visual next time.